what we have today is a, a meeting uh, for a developer to come in and talk about a project they're proposing in the village. Uh, the developer, Gary Leonard, and his team uh, are here because they want to open up a, uh, a grow operation for recreational marijuana. Uh, and they say, you know, then turn that into uh, production of hemp. When a developer approaches me, uh, I, always, I always put something together with the neighborhood uh, around the project, but this is a, th this is, this is a, this is bigger than a couple of houses. This is, this, this is, this is a new issue. This is recreational marijuana. So I, when I talked with Gary, I said, I'm going to open this up to the whole ward. We're going to have, you know, a ward-wide meeting about it. He said, absolutely, I'm okay with that. And so here we are. Uh, my job is to, to put the meeting together to make sure that you know as many of as many people as possible can come uh, and they can get their questions answered and their concerns heard uh, after the presentation from uh, from the guests if anyone has any questions please come up to the microphone and ask them uh, if people can't hear it you know I'll be happy to you know shout the question out again or relay it or something um, I am sorry again that we don't have a microphone here. Uh, additionally, if you are not on my ward email list that I use to publicize these meetings, there is a uh, notepad right over there by the bottles of water. Please come up, put your email address and name down, and I will add you. Uh, and there is the water. If anyone wants a water, uh, feel free to come over and grab one. All right, and I do also want to acknowledge uh, Officer Bill Healy, the consummate professional. He's, um, he's here on behalf of the Brockton Police Department. He handles things uh, like neighborhood watch, tip lines, things like that, uh, things that are essential in you know, helping us uh, keep some safety. But now I do want to hand it over to Gary Leonard, um, and I will be right over there if you've got any questions, any concerns. All right, thank you. I'll stand in front of the microphone to make it look good, okay? So pretend it's on. Uh, I want to thank Councilor Lally for calling this meeting tonight, um, and I appreciate the people who did show up. Uh, the state uh, requires me to send invitations out 500 feet from the uh, establishment. I went 1,000 feet just to get the consensus of the neighborhood a neighborhood I grew up in. Uh, I happen to be a Lithuanian boy, even though I have an English name. My real name, uh, before my great-grandmother came over from Ellis Island, was Lenatovich. Uh, <clears throat> when I was uh, uh, a young uh, boy, uh, my uh, great-grandmother settled on Oak Street. We now know it as the Westgate Mall. Uh, she squatted on a bunch of land up there, and uh, she fed all the neighbors, and she always told me, uh, Gary, do not speak English in this house. So I couldn't speak English until I was five years old. Now I can't speak Lithuanian now that I'm 65 years old, so I guess it works out all right. Uh, the reason why we're here tonight is to talk about the uh, Old Brockton Soul on 53 Spark Street. Um, what it is, uh, it's an old factory that uh, used to manufacture shoes. Uh, it hasn't been used as a manufacturing facility for quite probably 40 years, probably even longer. Um, I would like to bring that back. Um, I have a lot of information up at the front desk there pertaining to what the cannabis industry offers. Uh, not medicinal, but uh, recreational and different uh, uh, strains of what it's used for in uh, like rope, uh, making hats, wallets, belts, and finally we come down to shoes. Now hemp is a unique product. It was outlawed in the, um, after World War II for the simple reason that nobody was buying cotton products. They were all buying hemp products. And most of the politicians in Washington owned all the cotton fields in the South, so they thought they should outlaw it, which they did do. So up until about a month and a half ago, the only thing that hemp was used for was for rope. And now it's been approved to use into any kind of manufacturing of any textiles as possible. Now the reason why hemp was outlawed is because hemp lasts for 35, 40 years. So when you sell a pair of shoes, it's a one-time shot. 
You're not going to get a repeat customer. So, of course, you'll be paying for that privilege. And what Brockton will do, and what these factories were meant to do, was to hire the neighborhood people to work in them. That's why they were built in residential areas. And I would like to bring that back, because my father was a city councilor here back in the 60s, and I remember going up to these factories as people came out. He shook their hands, and they all, so I just live across the street. Would you put a sign up over there? Yeah, I live up the street. Just put one up there. I live on Arthur Street. Would you put one up there? And that's how he got elected six consecutive times. And believe it or not, he was a Republican in, Bro in Brockton, and he still got elected. I don't think that might happen in these years, but it did happen back then. A um, little bit about myself. Um, I grew up in Brockton um, all my life. I've never deviated from the city. Um, I grew up uh, going through Brockton public schools, graduated from Brockton High School in 1972. And then I uh, went on into the um, real estate business. I've been a commercial realtor now for 47 years and um, followed in my father's footsteps. Uh, in 2006, I was uh, deemed terminal with uh, esophageal cancer. Um, and due to the general public here in the city of Brockton, they made me champion of the city that year. And I finally uh, decided that uh, I was too young and a lot of things that I had started, I hadn't finished yet and I was too young to go. So here I am 12 years later talking to you 110 pounds lighter. Um, you wouldn't know I was the starting center for Brockton High School's first Super Bowl team at 235 pounds. Uh, I'm lucky if I can hit 155 right now, but I'm working on it. I'm always working on it. Um, I've also, um, I was the president of the Save Our Sports, um, which is the Brockton High School Sports Foundation for uh, 14 years, I was their president. I um, started with them 27 years ago uh, when they implemented the program. I'm very proud of that, and that's why the kids in Brockton do not have to pay to play sports. We pick up the little incidentals that the city cannot afford to pay for, and therefore the kids uh, are the only ones in the state of Mats besides Randolph that do not have to pay to play sports. And I'm very proud of that as well. Um, so that brings us up to these days here. Um, my father passed away two years ago, and my dad made me make him a promise. Gary, do what you can to bring back the city to what it was when you grew up. Um, my grandsons and my great-grandchildren should come up in an environment such as you did, and if you could ever bring that back, Gary, I'd be looking upon you and just smiling, and you make me a very happy man. Well, I tend to keep that promise. I tend to employ as many people as I can from my city. My starting wage will be at $17 an hour, and that's for cashiers. I don't think any, uh, Amazon got a big uh, round of applause for starting off at $15 an hour. Well, we're starting off at 17. This is a very lucrative business. I'm a very giving person to my city, and I expect that our corporation will be uh, very generous when it comes to mitigation, mitigation uh, beautification, uh, security, and otherwise. So here I'm here to talk about four points. And uh, what is the impact we're gonna have on the neighborhood? Well, this will be a gated facility. It'll be a keypad. You need a key, uh, um, uh, a credit card to come in through the gate and then when you get up to the building you have to punch in uh, a code in order to enter the building. Once you enter the building you have to have a sign-in sheet and a name tag before you can even enter the facility as a whole. The security is pretty well outlined and enforced by the state of, of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, the Cannabis Commission. Uh, it's 107 pages of rules and regulations and that's just from the state and not from the city of Brockton. The city of Brockton has its own ordinances, which are this, just about to pass uh, February 11th is gonna be the meeting for the city council, and it should be passed at that time, just to bring you up to date. Um, diversion to minors. There is gonna be nothing indicating what we do or how we do it um, on the building or anywhere around the building. It's just gonna have the name Natural Agricultural Products because that's what we are, an agricultural company. I don't care if we were growing lettuce, tomatoes, or cannabis. It's an agricultural product. And um, now that it's legal in the state of Massachusetts, we as a city have an opportunity to capitalize on a lot of income 
Um, I had a, um, uh, my partner uh, and I went out to Colorado uh, last April, had the opportunity to uh, meet the mayor, the cannabis commissioner, a few members of the uh, marijuana advisory panel, which I intend to create here in the Brockton. The uh, marijuana advisory panel are people who were negative, uh, that weren't for the industry. And what they do is they find out how they can critique it so it becomes more profitable for the city itself. I, don't, I really don't care about the product. It could be diamonds. Um, it could be rubbish. If it generated this kind of income or this kind of revenue for a city, I'd be all aboard no matter what it was. But after meeting the uh, mayor and the cannabis commissioner, um, it kind of changed my mind. I had the stigma like everybody else did. I was brought up in a different atmosphere. I was taught that this was not good for you, this would only hurt you, it was a gateway to this and a gateway to that, and come to find out that it's probably one of the best medicinal things that we've ever researched in over many, many years. I even found out recently, now they added to chemotherapy because it excels the chemo, so they don't have to give you that many um, treatments. Uh, every single week they come up with Alzheimer's, they're now uh, treating Alzheimer's patients, paraplegics, um, people with MS. It, the list just keeps going on and on and on. What a change from what I thought it was. And again, I had the stigma like everybody else. And they says, well, when I went out to Colorado, they says, well, forget about the product. Just think about the industry itself. And they took me around and showed me exactly how it worked. And I was so intrigued because I've been in economic development all my life as the Main Street's manager here for the city of Brockton. I was all about the economic development. How do we build up our downtown? They had the answer. I brought the model here, I gave it to the mayor, and it's now in the city's hands on how they want to do it. Um, now, uh, we're talking about now the impact on the neighborhood. The impact on the neighborhood will be is that we're going to put lighting all around the facility up and down the street, try to mitigate what we can because the river runs right through our property there and it all seems to congregate on the, and it's been doing it for many, many years because I was a bartender at the Lithuanian Citizens Club back in the early 70s, the good old days. Um, <laughs> I used to hang around with the... Uh, Gary's brother, Ralph Losowitz. <laughs> we used to go down there all the time, and uh, Ralphie was uh, putting up siding at the time, and uh, his crews used to go down there, and I used to um, erect um, these mini storage facilities, and we'd all bring our crews down there, and uh, I'd have to hop behind the bar because it was still run by the citizens at the time until Vinny took it over years later, but uh, uh, I'd have to go behind there because uh, most of the bartenders didn't speak English, and all my Kids couldn't, uh, guys that worked for me couldn't speak Lithuanian, so that kind of worked out pretty good. <laughs> but um, there were a lot of problems in that. We don't have any sidewalk, <coughs> sidewalks down there. Um, it's all dark. It's all going to be lit up. Uh, we're going to put street lighting down there. And I'm looking for any kind of uh, concerns that you might have or things that you th think that we might be able to do to improve the neighborhood. And that's why I'm here this evening to get which your feedback is to me. So I should really be sitting where you are and you should be up here telling me what you want. <clears throat> so with that being said, um, I would just feel some, um, some questions or some sort of reaction from the crowd. If somebody wants to stand up and Hi, I'm an I, Arthur Street resident. How many jobs are you going to be creating now? Well, this will be done in tiers. We're not going to be utilizing the whole building right at once because it needs a lot of renovation inside. Right. You're probably talking about three to four million dollars worth of work just on the inside. So, so we're tearing it. Work on the outside. 
will be working on the outside as well. Oh yeah, that's very important. We don't want to work in an eyesore that we see there <laughs> right now. Uh, we would like to enhance the building. Okay, and uh, roughly what's your output going to be? Well, if we do 100, uh, we're only allowed to do 100,000 square feet of canopy, which is grow operation, yep. um, and that building just does that, 100,000 square feet. So the whole building eventually will be 100% agricultural. All right. Thank you very much. My pleasure, dear, and thank you for having a question. Come on, people. I know you got some questions. Come on, Gary. Come up here and ask me a question, would you? <laughs> Is there any retail sales being done at the building? Absolutely not. Only wholesale, that is the only thing that that operation can do. It's not allowed to have both in one facility. All right, thank you. You're welcome. All right, now I'm going to get hammered. Go ahead. Are you going to be leasing the building or are you going to be buying it? Well, we're going to lease with an option. Lease with option? Lease with option, so yes. All them containers in the back are probably going to go? Or? Yes. When we purchase the property, all the containers will be gone, yes. But if you don't... They might not, right? If I don't purchase the building, yeah. I it's part of our business plan. It's all every two years we purchase the buildings that we're in. That's yeah. our business plan. I didn't know it was for sale, so Well again, it's an it option to purchase. Option, yeah. Right. So they weren't thinking about selling I'm just or anything. Mainly concerned about the outside, what's gonna be happening there? What kind of security are you gonna have? Well, it's, it'll be a gated. I have buildings on both sides of you, so. Yeah, right, I know you do. I, that's why you got two yeah. invitations to come tonight, right? Well, actually, I got one yesterday, that was <laughs> it. <laughs> so. no, uh, like I said, the abundance list I get from City Hall, so yeah. it duplicated a lot of people. That's and, my main concerns. You know? Right, no, we're there to beautify the neighborhood. Uh, again, uh, that neighborhood hasn't changed since 1970s, right. early 70s, maybe late 60s. But uh, I intend to change so that whole neighborhood. So your intention is to beautify the Intervale Street side or the Park Street side? Both sides. Both sides? Both sides. Okay. I want it to look like Footjoy. I mean, okay. uh, that's, that's what yeah, that whole neighborhood nice. look, should they, look like. Footjoy keep the building up real nice. They certainly do, and that's they what do. we intend to do, exactly like Footjoy, okay. follow in that footstep. Absolutely. All right. That's all I have to <laughs> Thank you, Gary. Street yep. is a open lot on the side there beside 53. That's where the uh, club used to be, the Franklin Club. Uh, uh, no, this is a, it could have been. I'm not sure. Yeah, I caught a, a big fire. Open lot. Yeah, it, it burnt down some is years ago. Is that going to be. That's ready? not part of this property. That no. is not. No, so it's not. It, lights or anything down in that area? The reason why I say that is. Um, we can only light the area that we own. Okay. We're not allowed to, uh, unless the city gives us permission. And I'm willing to work with the city with w whatever they like us to. It's do. always a dark spot. There's always people putting trash in there, and there's always. It's a dumping ground. Yes. It is. Yep. I understand. I understand. But okay. uh, again, I don't you want. Can't touch that. As being a neighbor in that neighborhood, I'm not going to stand for dumping grounds in my neighborhood. I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you. And I'm, I'm a very loud voice. <laughs> <laughs> come on if i have to buy you a cup of coffee to get up and ask me questions come on <laughs> I, I understand that uh cannabis cannabis growing facilities emit quite an odor what do you plan as far as filtration uh filtration um i'm going to have um my uh, uh research and development david will let answer will answer that question for you hi Dave al davis uh, dave over here <laughs> As far as odor, that'll all be done through um, carbon filters. The building itself will be kept under a negative air pressure so that whenever a door opens, it will only be pulled into the building rather than escaping from the building. All building that leaves of that, all air that leaves the building will go through a carbon filter, be filtered out through to the outside. There will be no odor. Odor is actually uh, one of the codes that the city of Brockton put in for their ordinance, so they will be checking for odors and there should be none at all. I understand that the people up on West Chestnut Street that have a growing facility have a problem with odor, and I assume they're under the same stipulations that you're under. What are you going to do that's different than they're doing? Because I'm assuming... Maintain that negative the air pressure. They're having a... Yeah. Uh, 
the, t the time that they have odor up there is usually once a month, and that's usually when they're changing filters. Filters have to be changed periodically at the building. They have to be cleaned or, or replaced. Um, if they're keeping a negative air pressure while they're doing that, there should be no odor. Their problem is a negative air pressure is what it is. Um, I'm a heating and air conditioning contractor, and I know the movement of air and how to control it. That's such an old building. Is it capable of creating that negative air pressure in a uh, tenable uh, condition? It, it actually helps it because the building has is so uh, porous, and there, there is um, so many leaks in the building. The more air that we suck in to blow out, the higher the negative air pressure will be. So, just maintain a negative air pressure is all you have to do, as long as you're filtering through carbon filters. The, um, the state has a really nice program set up to, to maintain it. Okay. Plus Thank we're you. not selling retail marijuana out of there, so it's not the same thing. They're selling yeah. the already finished product, and that's why in good health they probably get a smell from that. And their doors are open and closed all day. This is a sealed facility. Once you show up in the morning, nobody leaves and until five o'clock at night when they go home. There's not gonna be people coming and going, coming and going, other than the delivery, which will be at the loading docks, which aren't even connected, to, which are connected to the building, but not to the interior. They'll be divided. Are the loading docks you anticipate using the current ones that the Red Cross is using for their... Uh... No, they're at the end of the building. We'll be using the uh, commercial dock up at the front side where the uh, elevator is. Yeah, there's a, uh, there's a freight elevator in the building as well. Uh, we're, we're not going to be starting out using the entire building. We don't own the building. We'll be uh, working in three separate tiers. We're going to start out with a small amount of grow area, and then after the first harvest, we'll accumulate more um, floor space as the rest of the building is cleaned out. The building right now is being used for storage, so um, they're going to make as much available as quick as possible but uh, we won't be starting with the entire building. It'll start out as a very small operation with four to six employees, and then after six or eight months, we'll go up to about 25, 30 employees, and after a year, two years, could have as much as 100 employees working out of the building. They'll be able to walk to work. <laughs> yeah. And, and we will do a job fair here in Brockton. Uh, we do want to um, employ local Brockton residents. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. <clears throat> How you doing? My name's Ian Woods. I had a couple of questions. I think I recognize you, Ian. Yeah, you know, to everybody else. Um, are they charging you a premium on the lease for the first two years? Are they charging me a premium on are the lease? Are they charging you more than what it, what it would be with, without knowing what you're doing in the building? Uh, it's kind of a private thing between me and the landlord. So okay, no, no problem, no problem. And, um, I don't want to get into finance, <laughs> how no, my finances are. No, no, no. That was more for me. Um, <laughs> and will growers be able to sell their, pro, um, their product to you if there's ever a shortage, if it, if it passes the state qualifications? Yes. That, that's, if the state deems it an economical state of emergency, they can allow, they can allow the wholesalers to purchase from homeowners. The law hasn't been passed through the state. The state will have to approve it first. Okay. Thank you. So you mentioned you were a realtor in the past, and now you're... Oh, I'm still a realtor. You're still a realtor. Okay, so you're developing this this building, and have you developed other buildings? Yes. Oh, yeah. I, I was the Main Street's manager for the city. I right. brought the National Main Street project um, here to the city okay. of Brockton. Yeah, I was just curious what other developments you have that we could, you know see and then as far as your group goes where have you all developed growth centers in the in the past um, well this is a brand new industry okay. in, in master nobody's been able to do anything because we haven't had a license right. here yet so this will be the first so this is your first experience it is with this okay thank okay. you Hi. Hi. <laughs> I'm fairly new to the area, so but well, I welcome. got a couple of questions. Thanks. So, in terms of you're saying within two years or so, you've got a hundred employees down there. 
how is is that area sufficient enough for two and a half acres parking and everything two and a half acres and they'll be yes. on there mm -hmm. okay that's good enough yeah all, all off street parking no it's all in the complex okay. it's not out in the streets or anything like that great the second question is security wise yes as far as any waste and rubbish that you guys generate is that all contained within that fenced property or how's yes, that yes it's how's within the building and it has to be extracted and taken out uh, right. professionally um, okay. the state is very stingy right. on that so. all right i've just heard of a incident in framingham where it seemed that somebody was getting into their dumpsters yes so yeah we heard about that too and that's why they're shut down okay all right great and i believe me with an investment like this you don't want to be shut down correct all right thank you you're welcome how many other locations have you looked at possible I'm looking at houses. I'm looking at all the old factories all of them in the all city the of Brockton factories. yes have you taken into consideration zoning regulations of course that's you what have. this is all about then how can you put a marijuana grow on Spark Street mm -hmm. when the city ordinance states you have to be 250 feet from a residential zone you're bordering an R3 zone on Intervale Street that bordering it's a special permit that you would have to obtain from the city of Brockton in order to operate in that zone that's right and you have to be one of the regulations is you have to be 250 feet from a residential zone again you'd have to go before the zoning board of appeals and ask for relief to the zoning board of appeals in order to do that and that's what we're doing that's why we're having this meeting here tonight no no that's what a zoning does. They give you relief. Yeah, I know what zoning does. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I've read the ordinances. I know what they say as well. Mm -hmm. Now, you said earlier that your lowest paid position was going to be a cashier for $17 an hour. That's correct. That's the what lowest. do you need a cashier for if you're not going to have retail sales? Well, I'm saying when I do have a dispensary, it's not going to be a dispensary here. I was just stating a fact that our employees, when we do have our, we're only allowed one license in the city of Brockton one dispensary license. We're going for our location. After the um, city council ratifies it on the 11th, we'll be announcing where our dispensary will be located, and I'll be doing the same type of forum in that area, which is not in Ward 6, just so you know. And my lowest paying job is $17 an hour. That's what I stated. You know, and, well, you never really answered the First Lady's question about how many employees, but your partner yeah. did a better job of it than you did. Yeah. Yeah. When well, it, yeah. it should, should grow up to about 100 after a cost or about two years. two years. You're looking at around six or seven harvests by time it'll be up to that high. A harvest takes roughly four months. <clears throat> okay. Uh, why are you just looking at old factories? <clears throat> Because the old factories haven't been utilized in so many years. This is my goal. This is a personal thing with me. I want to see these factories up and running again, manufacturing textile. And the textile I plan to use is hemp products, which is the stock of the cannabis plant. Well, to be honest with you, I'm dead against it. Okay. Okay. Um, I'll be right up front with you. That's fine. I, okay. that, that's why you're know, here tonight. I know that you live on the west side. I mean, you're as far away from the west side as you can get. Why well, don't you put it at the old... But for I 27 mean, years, I lived on North Main Street on the north side. Which is uh, not the village. I understand that, but for 20... Yeah, so did I. I didn't always... Right around the block from you. I, I haven't always lived on the west side. I was born on the west side on Belcher Avenue. I then moved to North Main Street when I got married. No, I moved to Motland Avenue, then I moved up to North Main Street and bought properties up there, stayed there for 27 years. When I got terminal with cancer, I decided that I would buy a house for my father and my wife over on the west side where he would live downstairs and she would live upstairs and son of a gun, I lived. So you know, I'm there now. It seems like everybody's dumping on, the, dumping on Ward 6 and the village in, in particular. Over the what, years, who, who's dumping on no, that? It, over the years, over the years, everybody's got a new, a new, a new plan, and it comes to it always has to come to Ward Six for some reason. Okay, I don't know if you've looked at a huge building on the west side called Ocean State Job Lot. They're going to be moving. That's going to be an empty building. That'd be a great place. Plenty of parking, plenty of lighting. It's not allowed. You know? It's not industrial zone. I can't. It's I, a commercial I'd love to. zone. I can't, I can't put a grow up in a commercial zone area. It has to be industrial. 
I can go into industrial one, two, and three. I cannot go to commercial. Um, I think you can go a little further than that, if I read it correctly. Uh, again, right. I, <laughs> I, I've been doing this for quite a while. <laughs> Uh, my yes, name sir. is Peter Karras. I've, yes, I've been Peter. on Spark Street for about 15 years. I have my business there. Yes, Peter. Um, could you just talk about what the procedure is for the approval, first of all? You talked about you have to go in front of the zoning board. Um, do we get, uh, the neighbors get any say as far as that approval, or is that just strictly between you and the zoning board? No. You have your say at the Zoning Board of Appeals. You get okay. to speak at the Zoning Board of Appeals. Okay. And Planning Board. All the, all the licensing commission. Sent out again as those meetings. They're going to make us um, send notice out to all the abutters again for the zoning meeting and for the planning meeting. So okay. you'll be kept informed for all of them. Okay. And which we want you to be. Another question. So you know, I'm off. I've been, like I said, I've been on Spark Street for 15 years. Mm -hmm. I'm all for improving the area, especially that building. Um, but my concern is, you know, I've been there 15 years. I really haven't had any problems there. It's been relatively safe have you looked have you done any um research into uh other buildings doing similar things the impact that they've had on crime in the area or anything like that that you could talk about um, I, I i really haven't done any diligence on crime in the area I'm, okay i again this is a building that i'm proposing to, to set up a shop in. Right. And until I got the consensus of the people who live in the area, I wasn't really going to do anything, even though I put deposits on, you know, to hold the buildings for okay. me. Okay. So, again, from my standpoint, that would be my, my largest concern is, is that going to bring a more a criminal element into the area, knowing that, I mean, you say you're not, you know, <coughs> people aren't going to know you're growing pot in there, but I mean. I'm not no advertising way. it, not putting yeah, it that way. Yeah, but people are going to know. I mean, the one way or another, the word's going to get out. And now, well, we a pharmacy have does the same thing. A pharmacy has drugs in it, yeah. and you don't hear about, you know, them being, you know. Security is really strange. It's very. I'm sorry. Security is very stringent. It's all being um, taken care of through the state. Mm -hmm. So, um, all the cameras that will be on the facility, um, keeping track of it. They're all online, and the Cannabis Commission can go into our cameras whenever. It'll all also uh, be connected to the, to the police department. So if our alarm goes off, the, the police department is notified, and then the Cannabis Commission goes online and watches the robbery in progress if it's mm -hmm. happening. So it's uh, a lot tougher than a liquor store or a drug store. Or, it's a new industry, and they are tough on it. Mm -hmm. um, as far as crime, it's, um, if you're willing to take a chance and break into a drugstore, if you'd be willing to take a chance to break in, the criminal element's a criminal element, but we will be extremely secure, and whoever does break in will be on camera. Mm -hmm. Okay, but thank it's, you. It's, it's not a big thing. There's not a lot of break-ins into All right. this. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Willett, could you please oh, go to sure. the microphone? I don't know if this is going to work, but no problem. Um, I've worked in a hospital before, and I know what a positive pressure room is from okay. people who have contagious diseases that can't be in Negative. the general population. Yep. So you have to enter through an ante room, which is a sealed room, yep. and before you can get into the positive pressure room where the patient is, the door behind you has to be sealed. You have to be fully in, in protective clothing before you go into that environment, and that room is completely sealed. Yes. So how are you going to do that? that in a building that you're going to do some renovations on and be able to make sure that you're going to have that positive pressure in place because that's a very old building. Yep. And aside of tearing it down and replacing it with a modern facility, I don't know how you're going to be able to maintain positive pressure, therefore eliminating any of the odors that will be emanating yep. from the building. Yes. Well. First of all, we're not going to be t uh, maintaining a positive pressure. We're going to maintain a negative pressure. Okay. We're going to take I'm sorry. and be pulling. I meant pulling. the negative pressure. That's exactly what I meant. Yeah. Now, as far as what you're saying, it, that's a germ-free environment, a mm -hmm. little, little different than an odor-free environment. And for an odor-free environment, all you have to do is have the air pulling in the direction of the area where the odor is, the room of the odor. 
So if we put a negative a fan in that area blowing to the outside uh, while all the doors are shut in mm -hmm. that area, it'll be pulling in from every crack in that area, which will take and keep air from escaping from that area. It's the same way it's done in Colorado, the same way it's done in Washington. Uh, Gary and I did go right to the grow ops in, in Colorado. We went to two separate grow ops and we did sit down with the people running it. It's not, uh, this is our first time doing it, mm -hmm. but it's not that we're uh, unexperienced. Okay. Um, well, I'm just concerned about odors that will be emanating from the building and the neighborhood. Yep because that really is a concern. Because yep. there are other facilities in Massachusetts who have also, there has been um, people in the neighborhoods that have complained about the odors, yep. and that's something that would really be a detriment to our neighborhood. Yep. So that would be a big concern. Yeah. Thank if you. you. If you take a look at the um, Brockton City Ordinances, what they just put in place, uh, odor was really big on their list, and they actually put in an ordinance that none of the other cities and towns put in where you're odor elimination equipment has to be the most modern equipment available. Where other cities and towns uh, aren't pressing that, but Brockton is. So as far as odor, it's a guarantee. There shouldn't be any odor at all coming from the property. Thank you. Yes, sir. Evening. Mm -hmm. uh, could you tell me what the timeline is on when you'll be fully operation or how long is it going to take? <clears throat> well, again, we're waiting for uh, approvals from the city of Brockton, which, again, we're depending on February 11th to be the final reading for this. But after you do that, then you have a host agreement with your city, and you cannot apply to the state until you have that host agreement. Once you do, you submit it to the state, and the uh, state takes about two and a half months to approve an application. Okay. So you're probably talking about May or June. Okay. If all goes well. Yes. It could be if. as long as 8 to 12 months. There's no guarantee this is going to be up and running in 4 or 5 months. Don't be shy. Come on, guys. <laughs> I, I have a couple of questions. Great. Okay. First off, this is the first time you've done this. Yes. Okay. And you're from Brockton, so you're familiar with our city. I I've been a lifelong resident of Me Brockton too. my entire life. I have very deep concerns over something like this. this just, it sounds like you're set on the Spark Street development. I think there are a lot more places, factories, Stall and Dean, perfect location right down by the police station. Stone, Stone Dean is now an apartment complex with 24 apartments in it. I didn't realize that. Yes. But there are plenty of other factories in the city of Brockton. Nine. My concern is Nine. I live on North Ave. Mm -hmm. Okay, I live in one of the elderly buildings mm -hmm. owned by the state. You can't Crosby. tell me, Crosby Gardens, mm -hmm. you cannot possibly tell me or ever convince me that there will not be a criminal element that does not run out of this building. We see it every single day. Ever since the state has changed the laws and drugs and alcohol are now a disability, I can promise you for at least seven times the, over the last year, as a tenant in Crosby Gardens, I have watched the Brockton Fire Department give NACAM to seven individuals in our parking lot. That's right across the street. There's not going to be anything in Randolph, nothing in Avon. We know they're going to come to Brockton. There's rumors of a pot <coughs> shop at the old Papaginos or <coughs> the um, Walgreens. This is too much. It's not, I personally, I leave my house at three o'clock in the morning, four days a week. I am terrified when I leave my house at that hour of the morning. I don't know who's standing around, who's trying to get into the cars, they're breaking into the cars. Are you cars. saying that these elements come from this building? I'm saying that these come from all over. Okay. We've got drug addicts parking in that parking lot, doing their drugs, and then they throw their needles and everything out the window and you see them drive off. All the more reason why we need more lighting and, and fencing no, and, need and greenery is, and green space and 
We don't need to burden the Brockton police with more nonsense that they don't need to be dealing with. And I'm not sure if your private security would be enough to make me feel safe living in Crosby. It's well, just, I'm completely opposed to it. I would prefer to see you find a different location. And it seems like you have just automatically decided that Spock Street was going to be it. And I'm not sure that's the right option. I, I think you have a differential between retail and wholesale. This is just the grow. This isn't this to, is a grow. You th can't this is not tell a retail me that this spot. This is going to develop into more. I refuse to believe that. Well, it's not allowed by the state. You can't. It's against the law to have two of the same facility in the same facility. You can't have it. It's outlawed. It just can't be done. So this is grow and grow up only. And again, I want to turn that into manufacturing textiles. So you're manufacturing textiles. So mm -hmm. you're trying to tell me mm -hmm. that I'm not trying to. I'm telling you my okay, business plan. Okay, you're telling me you're going to develop your product, and you're going to sell shoes out of shoes hemp. made out of hemp. Yes. And how long is that process going to take? Five years. So in five years, mm -hmm. we'll have shoes coming out of well, an we, old foot, uh, an old shoe factory. That's my goal. Yes, shoe out of a shoe factory. That's right. Uh, that lasts 35 years. Good luck. Uh, just Google me. Just Google me on uh, on the internet, and it'll show you my past accomplishments on doing I'm things not, like this. I'm not questioning your accomplishments. I'm questioning your decision to take this and move this to Spark Street. I, I just think that that area needs a you corporation know, yes. like this to beautify it and get it. Let me see. There was a shooting down on at the street. Um, I don't know huge, what this has to do with the grow up, though. Shooting on at the street. I'm telling you the crime in the area. Uh -huh. You can't just ignore. You can't ignore it. No, it would be my neighborhood. Look at all the drug out of the bar room across the street. <laughs> this is not a place. It's just, I, so, I'm sorry. I think this is wrong. I, uh, okay. Okay, I wish you luck. Uh, thank you. <laughs> yes, sir. Good evening. Yes, Mike. So, hey, Michael. So it, it appears that most of the concern. <laughs> so it seems like most of the concerns are the impact that this is going to have on the neighborhood. Could you explain to people? Sorry, I'll try to raise my voice. It seems that most of the people have a concern about the impact that your business is going to have on the entire neighborhood. Correct. Now, according to the regulations that I read in the state, you are required to make it better. That is so also correct. no smell, no criminal element. You have to have your security. You have to make sure that you have control over your product, what you bring in, how it's brought in. 100% covered by cameras, yes. Okay. So could you explain that to the neighbors so that the the concerns of the the impact of the smell isn't going to be there because you're sucking that through and putting it through your carbon filters yes sir but more importantly the the element that is currently in the area would not be allowed in that building near that building gated you would facility not, you, you would have your people that are going to be making sure that this is not going to be brought in. Uh, and more importantly, the stuff that you are doing, the manufacturing that you're doing of the cannabis grow, you're actually going to ship out in a secure way so that it's not, somebody can't just walk up and take what they want or, or cause a problem where they would try to rob you. You're right. And there's no advertisement on any of those vehicles that's not allowed by the state as well. You okay. cannot advertise anything that you're transporting. Is there a way to amplify your voice so that <coughs> people I, could hear? I mean, I, I don't know if you have speakers or... Can everybody hear me or is anybody not... When you yell, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's I'm just, not yelling at you. No, but it, just so that the people can hear. I mean, you know, it's a concern. It's something new that some people... And change is hard for some people. Yeah. And some people don't want yeah. 
no matter what I was you one say. of those people a year and a half ago. I was the same thing. I, I didn't want to talk to David, and he made me go to Colorado, and I went. And he made you. What he, well, he did. He offered to do it, you know, to pay my way. So I haven't been to Colorado, so I went. <laughs> so it just, it, what I'm just saying, just for the people that are on the fence, that if they could see that, you know, the impact of the smell isn't going to be there, the impact of this element that would actually enhance, because we just got approval to put 10 units of residential on Interbale Street, which is another vacant building where people come in and, and do things that they shouldn't be doing. And, you know, if we can clean up these different little areas and make it a little bit better and make the impact better, you know, I, I think that it might allay some of the people's fears. Well, it isn't just the building that needs to, uh, economic development. It's the whole, the whole village. And I'm going to do what I can as a neighbor to just make an impact on creating a different atmosphere throughout the whole neighborhoods, all of them. I don't have a question. All I can say is good luck to you. Bring the money into Brockton, and we need it really bad. Because Thank you, Rico. Nothing Thank else you. is happening here. Talking. You drive around, and you see it. It's clear as day. We need the money. And I, we I need, need more the police officers, and it's a burgeoning industry, and we need it here. I don't care what you do. Just bring it in. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just so you all do know. I've been know, around my whole life. You can't OD on this stuff. Guarantee it. And the element is not there shooting up in a corner. Yeah. They, uh, just so you do know that everything that's sold um, out of that building wholesale, Brockton gets a 3%. That's what they get. 3% of whatever is sold out of that building. Whether it be sold outside of the city or within the city. The sooner the better. Thank Good you, Good luck Rico. to all of you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Hi. Hi. My name is Kim Williams. Yes, Kim. I just wanted, to, you touched on some of it, but I just want you to speak about what the revenue looks like for the city and what the time frame looks like. So. Well, like I said, on, on uh, a grow up, um, they get 3%. Of whatever you sell, they get 3%. So that doesn't matter whether you sell it within the city or outside the city. Now, we have four crops a year. Uh, three and a half is actually what it is. So. That should bring in Brockton, I'm going to say close to about, just from one operation, mm -hmm. anywhere from three to four million dollars. Yeah, we need it. Thank you. Yes, Officer Healy. Hello. Hello. So, uh, <laughs> I feel weird talking to you instead of, these are my people here as the Crime Watch Coordinator. <laughs> so I feel a little awkward. Uh, the lady from Crosby Gardens, I, I just, so that we're all clear, mm -hmm. I believe as a resident of 35 years, although I live on the west side, but I, but, I, but I lived for 10 years, I lived up on Cary Hill, Granite Street. I was friends with the Veraki family, for you old timers. We're neighbors. <laughs> all right? So I've been here many, many years all over the city. I have no affiliation with these people. I only know Gary. <clears throat> the building, to address the Crosby concern, the crime that you're talking about, in my opinion, based on the, uh, the facility down on West Chestnut Street, in which there has been I can't 100% say for part, but I can't be 100% sure. I think like zero calls, police related. They have two armed security guards there whenever it's open. It's like a fortress. The two security guards are armed and happen to be retired Brockton police officers. A guy named Bork, who also lived in the village for many and many years. I don't think we should confuse any type of crime stuff that you were referring to, to a facility that if we're to believe them, will look better than the rat trap that's there now. It will look better if we're Thank to believe you. them. And the, and, the, and, the other, and the other biggest thing, the other biggest thing, if we can believe them, the HVAC expert, if that odor does not go outside of the facility, I think we have, or you have, no issues. If in fact they violate the ordinance, and there is smell emanating from the we building. We get closed down. Is that, is that a fact? That's a fact. We get closed down. So in down. the ordinance, and there's an ordinance expert here, right? right. He could, you could read that. If, in fact, it gets shut down due to the smell, sh shut it down. Yeah, we have 60 days to rectify. Yeah, it becomes a nuisance. So right. I, think, I think that's a huge thing. And uh, let me spend, oh, and so on the HVAC expert, being cynical, back, back in the 80s when they did the sewer plant, there was supposed to be no smell on the south side. <laughs> so that's why, right? And as we know, that was not true. I patrolled that area down there back in the 80s, up to, I'm still on, 
right? Oh, and the God. smell driving down, they've had two o'clock in the morning on a summer night, was unbearable. But if we can believe them, and they redo that building, and I'm, I think it's a good thing, and I'm gonna spend some of their money now, throw them a bone, I think the young, where was the lady? Between Spark and Interville, not with the cashmere burnt down, but that whole rack, that, that lot there, yeah. I think I know who the owner is. I think I know who the owner is. I'll talk to them after. Purchase that and, and beautify it. And that's throwing a bone to them. That's any, green space, and that's what we tend to do. Exactly. That's the and, playground cause, we're cause looking that's for. that's looked like that for 20 plus years. And if that was beautified next to the revamped building, $4 million, it's a plus for that neighborhood. Footjoy looked fantastic. I mean, as, as an industrial bu building, and I've been in the village 30 plus years, I'm familiar with it. Um, I think it's a plus. I just wanted to give, as a resident and taxpayer, yes. not as a police officer, I just want to give my point of view. Thank you, Billy. I, I also failed to, I, I failed to mention that I also, um, uh, w um, I guess I was the creator of the uh, Egger Park Neighborhood Association. Uh, I don't know if any of you know where James Egger Park is on the uh, city's uh, southwest side, but uh, we were able to write grants and get that renovated over there. And uh, the association became so strong they started going out and cleaning up all of Campello. Uh, they helped me with the Campello Main Streets by putting the whiskey barrels in front of all the commercial establishments and planting flowers. Um, I've also created another organization, which is the Ash Street uh, Neighborhood Association, and they have a grant now that uh, they're going to be renovating that whole park, and they've become 320 strong. I mean, this is what I do. I build neighborhoods. I build relationships. I... Uh, I've been here all my life and I want to know who my neighbors are. So I go around and introduce myself door to door. Sometimes they don't speak English, so when I come back a second time, I bring somebody that speaks the language so we can start communicating, getting to know each other, getting comfortable. And that's what it's about. Feeling good about the people who are around you. Know who they are. Know who your neighbors are. It doesn't take much. It takes forums like this to get to know each other. Now this is my fourth time speaking to the ward uh, six people. Uh, Jack has invited me three other opportunities. One time I had pneumonia and I still came and spoke, but I had to run out the door kind of quick. But I got to meet a lot of you people. And we're all neighbors, we're all Brocktonians. And that's what we have to consider, we're all Brocktonians. I'm here to do good by Brocktonians. I don't need people coming out from Washington State, Oregon, Colorado, coming here to set up shop. I want to do this for the Brockton people. I need your involvement. I need your support. And I'll cut it off at that. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Oh, I, wa I want to introduce my team. Um, a lot of people might know Gary Keith. Uh, Jerry Marcellus. Ian Donnell. And I'm sure a lot of you know Larry Boyd. And Alex, Alex Bonato sitting over there in the corner. This is a portion of my team, and I have Jackie Murphy sitting over there. <laughs> and again, thank you all. I'll be here. Um, if anybody wants to, you know, afraid to come up to the microphone, wants to talk to me personally, I'll stick around for a little while so you have an opportunity to do that. And again, I thank you all so much. Have a great evening. Thank you, Jack. Thank you all for coming.